And, you know, and Manny's disclosures make clear, as if we had any doubts, the importance of public interest, public interest disclosure as a catalyst for social change. Uh, the demonstration effects of those disclosures have been absolutely enormous. Not just what happened at the time, but what's happened since. Most obviously, there have been other whistleblowers. There have been so many other whistleblowers who were directly inspired by Manning's disclosures. I'll name two of the most consequential ones, Edward Snowden and Antoine Del Toro. And thanks to the actions of Manning and <coughs> Del Toro, we have seen increased awareness of the importance of whistleblowing and changes on the legal level and at the level of international principles setting. The Tuswani principles were clearly, clearly informed by Manning's disclosures. Um, thanks to Snowden, the Parliamentary uh, Assembly of the Council of Europe made statements about the importance of um, giving asylum to whistleblowers in danger at the extreme end. And of course, thanks to Antoine Del Toro, there are other factors at play, but I think without Antoine Del Toro and LuxLeaks, we wouldn't have had the EU whistleblower directive this year. Again, another thing I was involved in and I'm very proud of. Um, but it's not just the whistleblowers. Or the, or the legal innovations which have followed in their wake. Um, WikiLeaks and the Manning disclosures inspired a whole host of related projects, from projects like SecureDrop and Global Leaks, other means of um, technological means of submitting disclosures, to um, journalism projects and, pro and projects for um, collaboration between, between activists who aren't journalists but want to make the most of information in the public domain. And you know, and finally, just a massive influx of people interested in the potentiality of whistleblowing into fields like this, including, dare I say it, people like me. Um, this, not, not me, but the other bits, um, are, um, I think it's worth remembering exactly what Julian Assange was after when he started with one of the maxims he holds dear is courage is contagious. This is exactly what he intended to do. He thought about it, he thought about a way of changing the world, he instantiated it, put into practice, he was proven right, he changed the world. This is why he is a major historical figure. Um, that should be quite enough for some people. I, I've often wished that it was enough for him, um, but it's you know that WikiLeaks has provoked other revolutions as well. Clearly, a revolution in journalism, and in ways which are so commonplace now we don't even think about them. Thanks to WikiLeaks and Julian's own legal travails, um, we now have tweeting in court. That wasn't a thing before WikiLeaks. The whole invention of the live blog, sort of very commonplace, mundane thing, that came about with WikiLeaks as well when I was advocating for Manning. Back in 2010, 2011, it was to the live blogs and pestering people in the comments section to that way. Um, but there are more profound evolutions in that as well, of course. Um, WikiLeaks always operated as a kind of wire service, um, encouraging journalistic collaborations around data sets which um, were curated and redacted where appropriate for a limited time. These pieces of data sets weren't dumped onto the internet, they were posted with means to search through the information and accompanied by a kind of terse report about what it is, about what it is and what the con contents. Um, WikiLeaks did not obviously invent the persecution of whistleblowers. It didn't even invent, it, it wasn't even the spark for um, the Obama administration to well publicize war on whistleblowers. That started before Chelsea Manning was so. um, that notwithstanding, it is striking to me the degree to which people who have been involved in WikiLeaks have suffered as a result of um, prosecutions, fishing expeditions, criminalization. I, I started writing a list of just the people I could remember off the top of my head, and maybe I maybe I should just like read it out to you because I'd like to. Appreciate the scale of it. So, um, yeah, Julian, obviously. Um, Chelsea Manning, Rudolf Bellman, Jeremy Hammond, Barrett Brown, Matt DeHart, Edward Snowden, Sarah Harrison, Justin Zimmerman, Jason Biggs, Kate Gamble, 
Ola Finney, Aaron Sport, Larry Love, Scott Scott, <coughs> Dave Morandi, Dave Hatch, Herbert Snorrinson, Samara McCarthy, Davis John, John Sutton, uh, Daniel Don Scheifer, Joshua Shulker, Paid House 14, Jason Katz, and there are others. Um, what makes Julian's, and I was, I was, I've been involved in defending many of these people, so I do not underestimate the suffering that Human Cross has been involved in. But in some ways, the prosecution of Julian is more, consequen more consequential than these. Because what is at stake in his prosecution is not just what happens to him as a person, it's basically everything that's been gained over the past 10 years, all of these revolutions I've been talking to you about. And I know I only have a very few minutes left, but let me just give a very quick, <coughs> very quick recap about actually what's happening to him at the moment. So, Julian Assange is a, is a high security prison at Belmont. He, um, where he'd been sentenced for a bail violation which you know, involved him for circumstances in which he sought diplomatic asylum for, you know, for seven years. Um, he is confined for 73 out of 24 hours a day. He gets half an hour outside each day and half an hour to do everything else. Um, his communication to the outside world is very limited. He's been visited by U two UN special rapporteurs who were involved in his situation over the past few weeks, but it's not clear to me that he's receiving mail, for instance. Um, as you know, he's been indicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act in the United States. Um, for a charge which relates to alleged journalist source communications, if you know anything about the subject matter at all, it's extremely clear that what is alleged is the sort of normal of the briefing of the wheel which happens within journalist source communications. That what he's accused of saying was actually cracking the password is complete nonsense to anyone who has any grip of the technical issues at all. Um, and it's exactly the same charge which the Obama administration decided not to charge because they rightly realized that it would implicated the New York Times as much as any other journalist or organization. Not just me who thinks that, general counsels, past and present of the New York Times are of the same view. Um, the US has until the 12th of June to issue a superseding indictment. In this case, I think that's probably quite likely. The um, investigation was prompted by um, a set of CIA leaks in 2017. I would expect there to be charges from that, I think. Um, as you may also know, Chelsea Manning, um, she was actually released from prison this morning, but this will be a temporary reprieve as she is, has another subpoena to appear before another grand jury next week and will likely find herself in civil contempt again. The only reason why Chelsea Manning is undergoing this further torment is because the United States DOJ is planning to bring espionage, espionage out charges. And they will do so in a way which stretches the extradition procedures to their limit. They are intending to extradite Julian Assange and then lay FBI Act charges when he's in the United States. You can think whatever you like about Julian. I have my own opinions based on more knowledge than most people, and they're totally irrelevant to me. Um, what you, I think you cannot do is you can or cannot deny the magnitude of his achievements. And his, and his importance. And if you're working in this sphere, you don't have to like him, but you should acknowledge that he's had an impact on what you do and the prominence of what you do and people's interest in it. Um, and for that reason, this is my slightly guilt trip conclusion, which you're lucky because I don't have much time to, to say it. Um, I think it is, I ask you, I would really ask you to make vocal at the very least your opposition to him being extradited to the United States, where the DOJ are planning to take us to pen to the papers now. Um, anything more you would like to do would be very much appreciated, and hey, come and speak to me about it afterwards.